you know, what, what we have discovered in this journey of emotional intelligence is there's a reason why you are not operating at peak performance. There's a reason why. And if we don't take the time to reflect and assess and evaluate our, our EQ, our emotions, our feelings, what is causing us to operate at suboptimal performance, right? So anyway, this, this, this topic I feel is so practical, so applicable. And again, I know some folks think, well, this is warm fuzzy. Listen, this quote unquote warm fuzzy stuff absolutely impacts the bottom line. It impacts how you make every single decision. It, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a game changer in your business, in your leadership role as an influencer. And we're excited to, to be a part of this journey with you guys. Welcome to the EQ for Entrepreneurs podcast. Like most business owners, you already know you need good business and marketing strategies to scale and be profitable. But at some point, you've hit the dreaded wall where you feel stuck and frustrated. EQ for Entrepreneurs is for business owners and leaders who are honest enough to admit that they just might be the ones holding their business back and are brave enough to change that. We're Noble and Kathy, and every week we're having candid conversations about all things emotional intelligence and how growing that has allowed us to get out of our own way and is radically transforming both our businesses and our personal lives. This is the secret sauce strategy for modern entrepreneurs who are tired of hustling without seeing results and want to grow a business and a life that they love. What's going on, leaders and entrepreneurs? We are so excited to uh, to be with you today. and We're going to share some awesome, awesome skinny about emotional intelligence. This is my awesome wife. Hi, guys. So, yeah, welcome to EQ for Entrepreneurs. And this is episode one where we're going to answer the question, what is emotional intelligence? What we found is that some people have heard of it. Most people have not heard of emotional intelligence or EQ. We use those terms interchangeably. They kind of mean the same thing. Um, the ones that have heard of it are like, like, wow, I need this. I need to learn more about this. Nobody's talking about this. This is really important. So that's why we wanted to start this podcast. Yeah. And then there's a whole other group that, again, are not even familiar with the concept and are not even familiar. A lot of folks that even have heard of emotional intelligence are not familiar with the grammar of emotional mm -hmm. intelligence. So uh, let's let's go ahead and define the terms here. So emotional intelligence is the capacity to be aware of, control, and express one's emotions and to handle interpersonal relationships judiciously and empathetically. Okay, so that's the big Google. It's a big fancy. If pants. you if you do if you Google uh, emotional intelligence, that's what you're going to find. How like how would you define it in your real words? Yeah, so in in my words, I would define emotional intelligence as your ability to be self-aware. So the more self-aware you are, the more uh, emotional intelligence you have, and the greater your ability to describe how you feel is another aspect of emotional intelligence and then another aspect is uh, of emotional intelligence is are are you or how much are you aware of other people's feelings emotions you know wishes wants needs desires all that kind of thing as well and it's not just the awareness so it's being number so it really starts with being aware of our own feelings and emotions where those feelings and emotions are coming from other people's feelings and emotions, but it's also, okay, now what do I do with that? You know, how does that affect my behavior? How does that affect? Because here's the thing. It does. It is already affecting all of our behavior. Our, the, the, the thoughts that we think, the feelings and emotions, and how much awareness we either do or do not have about them is affecting us. Most of us, however, are just not aware of how much is affecting us or in what ways it's affecting us, and we don't know what to do about it. And check this out. From a, I've got a military background, and we're going to share more details about all this. It is affecting whether you're, you know, military, you're an entrepreneur, you're a leader, you're an influencer. Think about the number of decisions that you make on a daily basis. Hundreds, maybe thousands of decisions. And all of those are impacted whether you're conscious of it or not 
by your EQ, by your emotional intelligence. And here's what's scary, because 100% of us have these, right? 100% of us, uh, this is just part of the human experience. But what's crazy, so here's one of the books, highly recommend, Emotional Intelligence 2.0. By the way, if anybody knows Travis Bradbury and can hook us up, we'd love to interview him on this podcast. I'm just going to throw it out there. If you know him, um, here's what, here's the, this statistic is kind of sobering. It says only 36% of the people that they tested and they tested over half a million people. Okay. And only 36% of them were able to accurately identify their emotions as they happen. This means that two thirds of us are typically controlled by our emotions and are not yet skilled at spotting them or using them to our benefit. And since we're talking to people who are entrepreneurs, who are leaders, who are influencers, this matters. This matters. You're going to notice this showing up in business, but also in your life. Like it affects everything because we are a human being. We're having a living experience and you can't separate yourself and your being from your business or from uh, whatever it is that you're doing. One other fascinating observation that I have made I've been a part of a you know again a number of different you know businesses organizations startups that kind of thing military where a number of those organizations have attracted very type a folks and you know entrepreneurs a lot of entrepreneurs are very very type a not not all of them of course there's exceptions what's been fascinating is in my journey in the different circles of businesses that I have been a part of I have had so many people, and again, military included, is, well, just fix this behavior or just believe in yourself or just work harder. Or just think positive thoughts. Think positive. Do more. Do better. And it's like, you know, every time I hear that stuff, someone coming from somebody that, that had a you know low emotional intelligence and I'm and, and working on that, it's like, do, do you think I'm an idiot that I haven't thought about that stuff before? So, so... Hearing it over and over, just work harder, or do more, or, or fix this, or do that, you know, has been completely ineffective for, for me to hear that. It's completely ineffective. So, and me as a leader, as an entrepreneur, um, as an influencer, I want to make sure that as I'm leading, influencing other people, I want to be effective in my leadership, in my influence, in my impact on other people. And doing more and working harder and you know just believing in yourself is, is is what I have found is there are reasons why in fact I just did a survey of a thousand people literally a thousand people I asked them how many of you all can honestly say you're operating at optimal or peak performance I think now it was kind of a dark room the lights were on us and it was tough to kind of see the the, the, the crowd a little bit I, I saw maybe five hands go up. Let's call it 10 for easy math out of a thousand people. That's not a good percentage. And, and then I asked him, I said, how many of you guys have ever heard before, work harder, do more, just believe in yourself, fix this, fix that? How many of you have heard? And, and again, you know, everyone's Everybody. heard that before. So, you know, what, what we have discovered in this journey of emotional intelligence is there's a reason why you are not operating at peak performance. There's a reason why. And if we don't take the time to reflect and assess and evaluate our our EQ, our emotions, our feelings, what is causing us to operate at suboptimal performance? Right? So anyway, this 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 topic I feel is so practical, so applicable. And again, I know some folks think, well, this is warm fuzzy. Listen, this quote unquote warm fuzzy stuff absolutely impacts the bottom line. It impacts how you make every single decision. It, 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 it's, it's, a trim, it's a game changer in your business, in your leadership role as an influencer. And we're excited to, to be a part of this journey with you guys. So we, today we just wanted to tell you a little bit about our story, kind of our background, because I think, I don't know, for me, it always helps to know where's somebody coming from? Like what? What credibility do they have to be speaking on this? And I will tell you up front, we are not like licensed psychologists, psycho anything. We're just two uh, business people who have worked really hard on this. And we're excited to share what we've learned with you guys. Yeah, we're, we're probably, just to kind of give you some perspective, we are probably, so we've been a part of, we're going to share here, 
almost 10 different startup businesses, all different kinds of businesses. And we have been very, very intentional at growing our EQ, growing our emotional intelligence for the past handful of years. Very, very intentionally read a ton of books. And the cool thing about, as you know, entrepreneurs and leaders, we're not, we're not just pontificators. We are applicator, right? Where we are at, we, we are in, we're not just, right? I talk about three things, right? There's three types of people. There's your, your thinkers, your doers, and then entrepreneurs have to do both. We have to think and do. You can't just do one or the other. You can't just do without thinking. You can't just think without doing. You've got to do both. Well, much of my business career, entrepreneurship career has been just doing. Well, fortunately, a handful of years back, and we'll explain kind of how, how the story, how the things unraveled um, is when we really jumped in and started. Well, and let me just share that real quickly since we're yeah. going into our story. Here's what happened. So I, I was raised, I love my family. I'm so, so thankful for my family that I grew up in. Of course, you know, my, my, I had an amazing dad. He was an emergency room doctor. I've got I've got an amazing mom. She taught Spanish at uh, university level and got an awesome uh, younger sister. The way we dealt with conflict growing up in our home was whoever yelled the loudest won, and that's how we that's how we handled business from the time you know until I left for for college. And what would happen is we we'd go off. Into our separate respective corners of the of the of the house, right the the, the red corner, the blue corner, right in a, in a boxing ring almost. And five minutes later, fifteen minutes later, an hour later, we'd come back and act as if nothing happened. So there would be no mention of the the big giant intense family fellowship that we just got done having. There'd be no discussion. There'd be no apologies. There'd be no acknowledgement of how anyone is feeling. So I was raised not as a stuffer. I, I am a recovering stuffer. I don't know if anyone else out there can can relate. I'm a recovering stuffer, and it was fine and dandy when. And I, the, my analogy is when my my emotions that I was stuffing were cute little furry fuzzy little monkeys. You know, it turned out it just started out as a little teeny furry fuzzy cute monkey. That that I would just stu- you know stuff in the in the in the basement, if you will, and as the years went on of of so many different emotional injuries, uh, e- e- you know e- emotional um, events. events, all that kind of stuff. Over the course of my, you know 15, 18, 20, 30, 40 years worth of emotional events that I have st- that I had stuffed. Guess what? That little furry, cute, emotional, fuzzy monkey was no longer a little cute, fuzzy monkey. He was now an 800-pound silverback gorilla that was that I, that became literally uncontrollable for for me. And I started to 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 lash out and get angry. You know, you know, Kathy in our in our conversations, there would be a trigger. And I would immediately turn into I call it I'd go into incredible Hulk, Hulk mode, mode <laughs> right? Or or gorilla mode, and and just start you know thrashing emotionally, not physically, but the the, the impact is 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 almost as bad, you know what I mean? And, and so uh, after a, a handful of outbursts, Kathy's like, "Look, dude, something is up. You, you know this is not how you know you have not done this before. This has happened multiple times. What is going on?" And I had to do some serious because she was. I was like, man, you're, you know, you're right. I, I have not made it a habit in my life to turn into Hulk, to, to go into gorilla mode, and so that really started our our journey into this whole world of emotional healing and emotional health and fitness and uh, emotional intelligence. Yeah. So let me just tell you our background real quick because yes, we are married. Um, maybe you figured that out. I don't know, but we've been married for. This year will be 24 years in just a couple months. Okay. So, mm-hmm. yes. So, I don't know. In today's society, that's a huge accomplishment. Um, and we've had to work very hard to uh, to get to this point and continue to work on it. So, um, no, why don't you tell me your background real quick? Yeah, so graduated from West Point uh, as an infantry officer in the 82nd Airborne Division did airborne school, jump master school, ranger school, all those, all the different schools. 
and was an infantry officer for, for, for a handful of years. And I got out after five years and then kind of began my uh, our business journey after that. Yeah. And uh, my background is I am a what's called an MK. I'm a missionary kid. My parents are missionaries. What that meant for me is I got to travel all over the world and see and do some really amazing things. Um, before I had even graduated from high school, um, I graduated from Bible school and I was really one of those people who was made to be an entrepreneur. Um, from the very beginning, I didn't want to have a boss. I just, I just couldn't wrap my brain around waking up every day and going to some job and having somebody else tell me what to do. That was just me. I don't know. I I was just that kind of kid. (laughs) And so being an entrepreneur was very, um, came very naturally to us. And Noble calls himself an entrepreneur evangelist. Um, excuse the term there that we're obviously borrowing, but really we're, we're big proponents. We are the biggest cheerleaders for anybody who's got the guts and the courage to step out and say, I'm going to give this a shot, <laughs> right? Win, lose, or draw. I'm going to have failures. I'm going to mess up. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a little bit afraid, but I'm going to stick my toe or I'm going to jump all the way in to this entrepreneur world. So for us, the way that we got started was in, like a lot of other people in the network marketing industry, um, that's kind of how we started. And then from there, we have been involved in either starting or somehow involved with almost 10 different startup companies. Everything from adventure leadership and corporate training. Um, government contracting. Government contracting. Spe- special operations guys, fitness and aquatic center, a couple medical imaging centers. Private uh, mentorship. Yeah, executive coaching. And now we're starting EQ for Entrepreneurs. So here we are again, right? We just can't stop. <laughs> so we love it. Like it is in our bones. We've lived this life for over 20 years. Um, and so we've got a lot to say about it. And so that's why we started this podcast because we're going to share it. Tw- and tw- oh, Yeah, I was just going to say 20, 20 plus years of, of entrepreneur uh, endeavors. And you, you, <laughs> I just look back. And I can't wait to share some of the, 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 the stories and the lessons learned that we have had of over two decades of business ownership and, and startups and stuff. And man, how much different those would have all looked if I had a greater emotional intelligence. <laughs> well, if both of us did, because, oh, it's been both of us. It has been both of us that's had a lot of growing to do in this area. And, and here's the thing. I can just... I'll just tell you, this is what I think. You'll have to say what you think. So over those two plus decades, we've talked to hundreds and probably thousands of other entrepreneurs, other people who are business owners in some form or fashion. And I I think I have yet to meet one, correct me if we're wrong, that doesn't that has not had something in their entrepreneurial journey that has held them back because of their emotional intelligence or their EQ. What do you think? Or currently. Or currently. Or currently still. <laughs> holding them back. Yes. And I'm talking, I, I've got buddies that are multimillionaires. I've got buddies. I've got buddies in all different phases and stages of their business journey, of their leadership journey. And I, what, and I'll give you a perfect example. This is a perfect example. So my executive coaching experience, I've, I've probably coached almost, maybe, maybe not quite a hundred different clients from literally... Uh, high school students that were going to be Division One athletes to multi-millionaire CEOs in their 50s and 60s. And one, this is just from my personal experience, 100% of my executive coaching clients exhibited behaviors as an adult mm-hmm. as a direct result of their childhood, which is part of that emotional, that's, that's all a reflection of emotional intelligence. And, and so, a hundred percent. Not not. That's not anecdotal. Like, oh well, twenty percent of my clients said one hundred percent of the people that I know uh, during my coaching time have ex- and, and and I could expand that to, you know, anybody really. Once I made this discovery, I started paying attention to folks. I mean, I wonder why they why why they their decision making process is this or that. And then what that caused me to do was once I made that revelation. Uh, you know, and it, I'm thankful that God, gave, you know, helped me out with that revelation is, um, well, how about my own life? Where in my own, because I've had a pretty much leave it to beaver childhood. And those of you all that are younger probably never heard of that before. It's old school. 
uh, t- TV show about yeah. this little idyllic family that had this, you know, great, great life or whatever. And, and <clears throat> which, you know, is very much in the minority. Most folks have, have some sort of dysfunction in their families and us included, but I would say we, we had a much better, both of us uh, had a much better family experience, but even in a, a, you know, you know, quote unquote, fairly normal again, whichever that is, but in a fairly normal childhood, we both have been exhibiting behaviors as adults as a direct result of our childhood. And we will go into some of those details. Yeah. And, and here's, what's crazy when we, if you do any digging at all into emotional intelligence or emotional or EQ, emotional quotient, it it will not take you very long before you discover what we discovered. Um, what they're saying is that your EQ is a bigger indicator of success in life, in all areas of life, even than your IQ, your experience, and your education. And that's huge. Like, that's huge. So uh, wisdom would say, hey, let's work on this. Let's learn about this. Let's focus on this. Because here's what happened. It did not take us very long into our, I would say within our first five years, right, of being an entrepreneur in our entrepreneur journey that we started to see this stuff. Like some of it we saw right away, but you just kind of muscle through and you just kind of work through, right? And you just kind of do more. But like Noble said, that doesn't last very long. And it didn't take very long for us to start seeing, now we didn't know it at the time, but seeing things like um, self-sabotage, right? Our attitudes toward money and, you know, whether those were positive or negative. And Try being in a business where you go into business to make money and not liking money or not being able to, you know, deal with money, Um, lack of self-worth, fear of conflict, lack of confidence, um, things in our own personal relationship. Because here's the thing, your life affects your business and your business affects your life. It's very hard Cause, cause, because you're the person. So who you are at home affects who you are in your business. And I mean, for us, because we've always worked together in our businesses, it's a whole nother level, right? Because we're always together and, and doing stuff. But we experienced burnout. Um, it was like we were flying this plane. And because we didn't know how to fly the plane, we flew it until the wings fell off. And just about you know, put us underground, um, basically. And so, you know, just, yeah, I was just going to say on that point, we're both achievers, you know, we're yeah. both very driven people as most entrepreneurs are very driven people. And, and we, again, not being very self-aware or yeah, little to no self-awareness, we drove our F-16, we, we outflew its capabilities. And so literally we crashed and burned in, 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 in the middle of our, of one of our entrepreneur uh, endeavors and it, it completely derailed us. And I was the, the, the primary guy who, who burned out and crashed and burned, but she obviously was, was part of that consequence because of, of what, what I was going through. And another huge thing I'll tell you for me, I'm also a recovering people pleaser addict. So not only a recovering stuffer, but also a recovering people pleaser addict. And, and I am shocked. I, I, it's been, as I've been growing my EQ, my awareness of how many of my decisions in my past have been a direct result of thinking as part of a huge part of my decision-making process, what other people were thinking of me. What, what, what is this person? What is, what are my West Pointer buddies going to think of me? What are my high school buddies going to think of me? What are my Christian buddy is going to think of me. What are my bit my 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 you know, entrepreneur buddy is going to think of me? What you know family? What's my family? Going? I, I I went through all these different people groups, right to 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 make decisions. And you want to know a sure way to be miserable, right? Because as as a leader and an influencer and an entrepreneur, you will reach a point in your journey where you will absolutely one hundred percent not be able to please everybody. And so if you make decisions that way, man, it's going to be a rough, you're going to have come realize or come up against some serious personal internal conflict 
because because of that that dynamic that you're that you're experiencing. Yeah, and it's like every what we've seen is every entrepreneur, every leader is going to hit an invisible glass ceiling at some point or a wall. However you want to imagine it, you're going to hit a wall that you're going to think, "What is going on? I'm doing all the right things, right? I'm doing what's recommended. I've got a marketing plan, I've got a sales plan, I've got a business plan, I've got this." Right? All these things so you might be doing all the things right, but you're still hitting this wall. It's like this invisible wall and it's the most frustrating thing on earth. And I can tell you that because we've been there, we spent years running up against this wall. And for us, it wasn't until they, we started learning because we're avid readers, we're avid learners. And it was just a few years ago that we first heard about emotional intelligence and emotional health and all of that. And it wasn't until we dove into that and started learning and started changing in that aspect that we were able to get past it. And it has not only affected our business, it's affected everything about our life. It's affected our relationship. It's affected for the positive, our family, our family life. It has affected our businesses. And we're relooking at how we do, how we do business and how we're going to operate because we want to do it from an emotionally healthy perspective. And that is what this podcast is all about. So this is what you can expect from this podcast. Uh, There's going to be a lot of candid, vulnerable, often humorous, uh, hopefully conversations that we're having about emotional intelligence. Um, We will share with you what we've learned, where we've been, and how to apply it to business. Because as an entrepreneur, it's a special animal, right? And there's just some things that are very unique to the entrepreneur journey. And we're excited to talk about that. We're going to talk about how EQ translates to almost every area of your business, believe it or not. Um, And we'll share the resources that have helped us. We'll uh, share how we've related it to our, our own business, to our own life and family We're going to have interviews. Um, And so we're excited that you guys are here for the journey. We hope you hit the subscribe button, share this with your entrepreneur friends. And um, yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah, we we look forward to being a part of your emotional growth journey and helping get your 800-pound gorilla down to a little furry monkey, ultimately uh, completely out of your life. So that maybe some of those areas in your life that you're either experiencing limitations in or repeating some behaviors or there's some trends in your life that are not productive or less than productive, that as you grow emotionally, it will begin to free up some of those areas where you've had some maybe uh, emotional, some negative emotional influences in your life and, uh, and, and, and begin to help you start operating your business, your leadership, your your influence in, in a much more emotionally healthy and free perspective, allowing you to become or operate at a higher uh, performance level in your life. So we, we totally look forward to being a part of this journey with you guys. That's it. We'll see you guys next time.